Good afternoon and welcome to BizTech's Asian Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Adam Reynolds, CEO Asia Pacific at Saxo Markets. Adam, great to have you on the show, even though because of your camera issues, we can't see you. Yeah, very sorry, Brian, but uh, technical challenges here today. I'm on, uh, I'm on my iPhone, which is for some reason not letting me open the camera. Not a problem, Adam. So great to have you on the show. Now, before we get your insights, uh, we'll take a look at how markets in the region are performing. And we're going to start with some of the cryptocurrency numbers. Now, Bitcoin is at 38,765. It's down 2.31%. Ethereum is at 2,540.99. It's down 0.42%. Now, looking across to regional stock markets, we've got the SGX, which is at 3,134. It's down 0.84%. First time Malaysia is at 1,493.81. It's up 0.05%. Now, looking at the rest of the region, we've got a mixed market. We've got the Nikkei at 27,565. It's down 0.78%. Shanghai Composite is at 3,464.31, which is pretty much unchanged. The Hang Seng is at 25,987.16. It's down 0.95%. Rounding off the numbers, we've got the ASX 200, which is at 7,460.9. It's down 0.41%. Now, Adam, what's your view on how markets have performed across the region today? Yeah, look, everything is a bit soggy after a, um, a bit of a... Uh, a soft night in the US. We failed to make a new high uh, in the US and we've had now quite a few days where we haven't been able to close at new highs. Um, whilst we're sitting sort of around the 4,400 level in S&P 500, it doesn't look like it has the momentum that it had in the past. So I think that that's weighing on, uh, on the markets in general. What I'm really looking at the moment though is where you started off with the crypto um, actually, uh, even since you, you picked up those numbers, we're seeing them trade off a little bit further, Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I think over the last two weeks, we've seen a very solid rally in those two, especially Ethereum, which has bounced uh, more than 40% off the lows uh, that we saw just uh, around the 20th of uh, July. Uh, and I'm looking for this dip to be a good opportunity to buy into Ethereum. I think the story on Ethereum is much stronger than Bitcoin looking forward. And uh, I think that uh, it, it's been outperforming over the last uh, two weeks as we've rallied. So I think any dip is a, a good opportunity to buy there. Adam, what is the, what's fueling this rise in Ethereum as opposed to Bitcoin? Because traditionally, Bitcoin was seen in the past year as something institutionals were buying into. And suddenly it seems to be a switch to a, more towards Ethereum. What's fueling this? Well, Ethereum, Ethereum's got a lot of big developments coming up over the next six to nine months, which is going to take it away from being a proof of work uh, algorithm that validates the, uh, the block to a proof of stake algorithm. And that is going to massively reduce uh, the amount of power that it consumes um, by more than 99%. I think it'll actually reduce it by more than 99.5%, wow. um, which is a huge, huge uh, change in the, the way the blocks are uh, consuming electricity. So that will also reduce massively the amount of um, uh, the cost of doing transfers in Ethereum, and it'll make the Ethereum network a lot more useful uh, to run its smart contracts, which is part of its major use case. Now, I want to uh, uh, switch now to Chinese markets. Now, what's dominating news in the past half of the day is really the sharp plunge of Chinese shares in the online gaming market. Now, this is after the activity was described as a type of opium by the state media. So what's your view on Chinese stocks, given the clampdown on these Chinese stocks in properties, in payments, in education, and now in online gaming in the past few weeks? Is it a case where perhaps we should buy when there's blood in the streets? To a certain extent, I think that that is right, Brian. I, I, I personally uh, actually went bought some uh, yesterday morning and uh, we saw a very solid bounce, um, which I think was probably engineered by the national team uh, coming in to support the market. And, and, and that's what pushed it up aggressively all morning yesterday. But we've held higher today. So for me, I'm focusing more on the A50 index, which is less tech focused. It's more real economy focused as a place to be long. I'd rather be long there than in the tech sector because I think the tech sector still has a huge amount of data issues 
that it is going to uh, is going to have to deal with. And clearly, the tightening up on the tech sector is also going to be a tightening up on other uh, other let's say less um, desirable parts of the tech economy, including things like gaming. So, um, so I, I want to steer clear in general of China tech for some time, but China real economy, I think, has traded off very aggressively as well and is quite undervalued and so buying that to me makes more sense now i want to uh, uh swing over to oil markets and and this particularly because of all the concerns around uh the resurgence of covid 19 across asia uh, and particularly because investors are so concerned about the in, uh, impact of the delta variants how do you see this impacting oil markets and the region as a whole I'm really surprised that oil's not lower. Actually, uh, I think that oil, you know, we've had some uh, agreements now from uh, from OPEC and um, about about the quotas. You know, they've satisfied the UAE, uh, and uh, you yeah, know, we're still trading in a similar sort of, sort of similar levels around the 70 bucks. We've got uh, slowdowns because of uh, Delta. The, yeah, the potential for that. To me, you know, it, it, it's not really coming off when it should be coming off. I'd, I'd have thought by now it should be more like $55, $60. And because of that, I think that um, as we move out of these concerns, we're going to have another run higher and the overall inflation narrative will reassert itself via oil. Now, final question, uh, Adam. What are the key events and data points that you're looking out for that will move markets uh, throughout the week this week? Yeah, so this week we've got uh, payrolls data on Friday, which is uh, clearly uh, you know, one of the big big data sets uh, each month. But um, I, I don't think it's going to deviate too far away from the, you know, the improvements that we have been seeing over the last few months. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a huge surprise. I think next week, uh, the, key, you know, the key number for me is, is, is the inflation data each month, which should be out uh, next week, I believe. And when that comes out, I think that's going to tell us a lot about transitory versus stubborn inflation. Um, you know, I'll be looking more at what are the components of it? Are the components broadening out? You know, people have been criticising the inflation numbers of being too much about used cars. Are we seeing it more broadly in the economy um, as we as we go further? And the, the longer inflation is elevated, and the more um, different segments of the economy are seeing inflation, I think the worse it is for stocks overall as the likelihood of an early tapering becomes uh, becomes yeah, more more apparent. Adam, thank you very, very much for coming on the show and thanks for your insights. Okay, Brian, thanks a lot. Good to see you again. Cheers. Now, we've been speaking to Adam Reynolds, the CEO of Asia Pacific of Saxo Markets on BizTag's Asian Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Please check out and like and subscribe our Facebook and LinkedIn pages, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Sure.